Howdy folks, welcome to Virginia City NV. I'm going to tell you the way it was in old Virginia City. So sit back and relax. We'll be right back after this message. When you want to find the largest selection of items and collectibles around, the best place to go is Treasures, Trinkets and Trash. Local and family owned, located at the corner of South Rock Boulevard and Hymer. Treasures, Trinkets and Trash features 30,000 square feet of furniture, tools, clothing, toys, artwork, collectibles, and so much more. They're open Monday through Saturday from 9 to 6 and Sundays from 11 to 4. This is the place to find your treasures. What was it like to be a lady of the evening in Virginia City in the 1800s? What drove these ladies to prostitution? Well, for one thing, poverty and the lack of jobs. In this episode, I'm going to tell you the story of the red light ladies of Virginia City. One lady in particular, an English woman, Julia Bulay, who lived in Virginia City from 1863 until she was murdered in 1868. This is her story. This is their story. The red light ladies of Virginia City. A parlor house was the top rung on the ladder of prostitution. These houses had the best girls, the best liquor, the best music. About time you got up. How about some breakfast, Liz? Coffee's all I want. Every morning, same old song and dance. You've got to eat. You know I won't take no for an answer. <sighs> all right, then. Ladies, he was full as a tick. That one was. Wasn't much work at all, if you know what I mean. Well, that's a damn shame. You got the handsomest one of the bunch. I was stuck with old Willie. That son of a bitch can go all night. No wonder you look so spry this <laughs> afternoon, Irish. You should see Liz over there. She looks like she's been run through the ringer. <laughs> Just the usual, nothing exciting. I do believe I will go shopping today. I am due for a new perfume scent. Ooh la la, Lizzie. Trying to up the stakes, eh, Spanish? <laughs> Lay down your cards, ladies. Lay down your cards. I think I won this hand. Oh. Hot damn! Winch, I need a drink. Where, girl, she eats less than a mouse. Anyway, that was, uh, that was a sword. Yeah, it was, it was really wonderful. Yeah, no kidding. That's Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, Good evening ma'am. Ladies? Perhaps you should pour some drinks for our gentlemen. This is really wow. Mining is so dangerous, especially in the Comstock. Gosh, you are so brave. I don't know. You don't know? I reckon it is. I reckon I am. You'd better do more than reckon. I got a lot of respect for what you do. Why, your work fuels this city. I'd be honored to have a drink with you. You sure do smell nice. I think it's time we get out of here and get one just a drink. Shall we head upstairs, Mr. Miner? Lead the way. 
enjoy. So tell me more about your mining plane. Yeah, well, yeah. the gold claim is the most important thing yeah. in my life. And uh, I have absolutely uh, no fear about showing up to you. Oh, really? Uh, and this gold vein is huge. How do you? It really is. <laughs> and you can just help yourself. There's, there's enough for everybody. Of course. <laughs> Take good care of him. Thank you. Timeless Fashion, the consignment shop for ladies of all ages. Offering the classics, the unusual and exotic, modern styles, business wear, and beautiful plus-size clothing. Leather, lace, corsets, vintage, and dream wedding gowns. Lovely jewelry and more at reasonable prices. 554 East Prater Way at McCarran Sparks. My name is Kathy, and I want to tell you about Somewhere in Time, located at 1313 South Virginia Street. We're open Monday through Saturdays from 10 till 6, Sundays 11 till 5. We have 19 different vendors, and we have a wide variety of antiques and collectibles, memorabilia, neon and beer collectibles, sun purple glass, comics, vintage Pyrex, oil lamps, casino memorabilia, and really too much more to describe. So please come down and see us. We'll be looking forward to that. For years, the Red Dog Saloon has been known for its music, but now it's known for something else, pizza. Hand tossed with our homemade sauce and your choice of toppings, it's the best pizza in the Comstock. The Red Dog Saloon, 76 North C Street in Virginia City. The next time you clean out your attic, make sure you're not throwing out gold. Watch the Antique Showcase with your host, Holly Nowara, Saturdays at 5 on Colo Channel 8. Wow, what happened to your computer? Uh, it fell off my desk. Technology Center can fix that for you in a heartbeat. Technology Center repairs Macs and PCs. Visit our large, spacious showroom. We're full of new electronics, new computers, monitors, keyboards, and all the accessories for your home and office needs. We have everything the big box stores have, and if you have a problem with your items, you can bring them back to us here locally and we'll service them right here. With Technology Center, you don't have to leave the area to get satisfaction. You're watching Virginia City NV on Colo Channel 8. I trust everything was to your satisfaction. As always. Thank you, sir. Come again. For the red light ladies of Virginia City, daily and nightly existence was never easy. They constantly gave their physical bodies and false attentions to the men who saw them only as mere sexual objects. It was degrading and caused them to yearn for something better. Looks like I better increase my luck. What, Campbell? No, you idiot. Hit the street. Below the ranks of the parlor house prostitutes were those who worked in the brothels, the cribs, and the Barbary Coast dives. A crib was a one or two room shack where a girl worked alone, no madam. It's here we find Miss Julia Boulay in the heart of the red light district, number four North D Street. Bulay was a 35-year-old middle rank prostitute who earned a decent living. A journalist working at the Territorial Enterprise once wrote, few of her class had more true friends. On December 22, 1865, Alfred Doten wrote in his journal that he, quote, partied with Julia Bulay. <laughs> oh, that was so funny. <laughs> Quite nice that you provide libations for your guest. I am to please. Is that your sly way of asking for another? 
I don't mind if I do misbelay. I am curious. Why don't you frequent the parlor houses? I understand those ladies to be quite accommodating. What makes you think I don't? <laughs> <laughs> I have been to the parlor houses. I understand the lore. May I ask, why do you choose this crib as they say? Why not work for a madam at a parlor house? <laughs> why should I? Is a burden or workload? I work for no one but myself. Oh. <laughs> I decide my terms. I decide who I am. No girl ever grows up and dreams of making a living this way. Oh, of course not. The more control I have over my own destiny, my own day to day, the better. Every day is a new day. Maybe tomorrow this will no longer be my destiny. Working at a parlor house would feel like giving up. Would feel like saying, I am going to be a whore forever. Jules, don't say that about yourself. I can understand why men enjoy coming here. <laughs> I am very specialized, you know. Yeah. I have a gift for gab. <laughs> Some might even say understanding. Oh, you are a very beautiful and kind woman, Jules. Why, thank you. <laughs> you do make me laugh. And I do enjoy laying down with a volunteer firewoman. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Mm. You won't find that at the parlor houses. No, ma'am. A toast to changing our own destiny. Two Sisters is a shop like no other and reminds you that there's no place like home, especially when your home is decorated with brilliant treasures of old, new, reports to home and garden furnishings. When you come through a bright red door, you realize you're in for a special treat, whether it be something for your porch or entryway, a piece of funky china, a vintage piece of art or retro linens. Every time you visit, you will see something new that will inspire you to make your home a romantic place. For over 100 years, Northern Nevadans have slept in comfort with the help of Reno Mattress Company. Hi, I'm Mike Berry. Can you flip your mattress? If not, let us custom make your next mattress. We offer Talalay latex rubber, memory foam mattresses, foam rubber cut to size, water beds and accessories, electrical adjustable beds and more. Plus, we specialize in custom sizes for your home or RV. Reno Mattress Company has been the place to shop since 1910. Come visit our showroom at 1210 East 4th Street. And remember, if you sleep on it, we can make it. Welcome to Forever Young Hair Studio, Reno's premier hair and makeup boutique, located in the heart of the Midtown District at 120 Toma Street, Suite 2. Forever Young Hair Studio is owned and operated by Young. At Forever Young Hair Studio, you will notice a relaxing atmosphere. Young specializes in hair design and makeup. Young's work has been showcased in photo shoots and fashion shows where you will often find her on the set. Call today for your appointment at 348-2500. The location is Sammy B's Auction House. Watch Auction Addicts 5.30 p.m. every Saturday on Colo Channel 8. For over 42 years, Pet and Place Pet Store has had love for sale. Kittens, birds, rabbits, guinea pigs, and even reptiles. You'll find them all at Pet and Place, along with all the supplies you'll need to keep your pet as happy and healthy as possible. We have a huge selection of toys and treats and delightful animal-themed knickknacks to keep you and your pet entertained. We specialize in live food for your best friend. When it comes to your pet, Pet and Place has what you're looking for. 1121 South Well Street in Reno. Welcome back to Virginia City NV. Buley contributed time and money to Virginia Engine Company number one. And the firefighters repaid her by making her an honorary member. And when there was sickness in the mines, Julia provided medicine and care to nurse the miners back to health. Uh. 
There, there now. You're doing much better. Hang in there. Thank you, Miss Julia. You're very welcome. I'll be right back. All right. And how are you doing, mister? Oh, I'm doing better. Would you like some water? Oh, that sounds good. Perhaps some soup and crackers? Yes, please. Wonderful. You seem to be recovering quite well. Yeah. Don't Thank get you. up, please. Not until I come back. Okay. It seemed that no matter how much Julia contributed and helped the town of Virginia City, there were always those that looked down on her because of her profession. Enjoy the show. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening to you, sir. You are the infamous Miss Boulay, I presume. Yes, sir, I am. Miss Boulay, you are at the wrong entrance. I beg your pardon? The entrance for the whores is around the back of the building. I will use this entrance. Thank you very much. Ma'am, rules are the rules. You will use the entrance in the back and sit in the assigned area that is for a woman of your profession. I would rather not. Julia, you can't let these town snobs get to you. But you didn't see his face. Um, the way he looked at me, he made me feel like I was trash. I've never been so insulted. Julia, you can't let them aggravate you. It's the principal, Gertie. I mean, I help with the fire department. I tend to the sick. And it doesn't matter how much I contribute to this town, they'll always treat me this way. But not everybody feels that way. There are more people in this town who love you than those who don't. Look. We are who we are. We can't change them. I suppose you're right. Hey! I almost forgot. I got something for you. <gasps> Jules, no, 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 no. I, I can't take this from you. Yes. Don't you insult me, Gertie. I want you to have it. Besides, I have others like it. You make me breakfast every morning and take really good care of me. And I really appreciate that. Oh, thanks, Jules. I love it. I really do. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm glad you like it. Well, I have to run. Oh? I have a gentleman calling tonight. Oh, well, you better get a wiggle on. Hey, breakfast tomorrow morning? As always. Good night, Gertie. Night, Jules. Jules, are you in here? Jules, wake up, lazy bones. Your breakfast is cold. Jules? Jules, come on, wake up. <gasps> Somebody help! I'd like to welcome you to Fred's Closet, where our goal is to take you from your everyday look and make you look like you just walked out of a painting. Our inventory is large enough to make our outfits limitless. We only work with our individuals by appointment. We pride ourselves in dressing you to the character of your imagination. Please give us a call. Our time is dedicated to making you perfect. Learn more about the great state you live in. Join my co-host, Neil Cobb, and yours truly, Dick Stoddard, for Home is Nevada. It's at 5 o'clock Sundays on Colo 8. Want to know what's going on in Northern Nevada? Then tune in to KRNG 101.3 FM, 5 to 3 p.m., Monday through Saturday. Come join the conversation at Northern Nevada's home of community radio. Let's talk politics, business, the economy, and all the great things happening in Washoe and the world. 
call in or come down to the Reno Town Mall. Get on the mic and tell us what you think. Listen online at renegaderadio.org. The home of community radio in Northern Nevada is KRNG 101.3 FM. Renegade Radio. Renegade Radio. Aesthetics Medical Spa and Training offers Botox, Dermofiller, laser hair removal, photo facials and skin tightening, as well as facials, massage and body waxing. All treatments are performed by aesthetics educators. It is also a facility for advanced training in aesthetics. Currently offering 50% off on laser hair removal. Located in Northwest Reno. Look and feel younger. Call for your appointment today. It's a risky business, Jewel. I'm sorry you had to pay this price. She's cold, Chief. She's been here a while. There was a struggle. She put up quite a fight. Has marks on her neck. Looks like she was strangled and suffocated. Pillows down here. Is Gertrude back home yet? Yeah, she ran into me on the street. I ain't never seen a woman that scared in a long time. Well, at least she found you. What'd she tell you? Well, she says a jewel came by last night after the opera house. They had a few drinks together and they were going to have breakfast together this morning. Jewel didn't show and Gertrude came here, found her like this. Looks like the place has been ransacked. Anything missing? Well, I asked Gertrude that and uh, she seems to think there's some furs missing. And um, Jewel had just bought a dress fabric that she was all excited about. Bought it from Sam the other day and, and uh, that's missing. And then the jewelry box here looks like it's been gone through. Clothing and jewelry just doesn't seem worth the life. Especially not hers. You're going to have to solve this case, Chief. This is going to be big news on the Comstock. I'll solve it. Okay, Steve. I'll take it from here. I'll tell you what. I want you and your boys to go down on the town and make sure nobody tries to sell her stuff. You think somebody would be dumb enough to try to sell her stuff here? With all the mining and prospecting we have going on in this town, thousands of people, you never know. You know, it was just last night, Chief, that uh, I passed her at the Opera House and she was real upset. And now, here she is. You know, we're the law here, and I didn't protect her. You can't blame yourself. We're only two men in a town of thousands. No, I guess not. I promise you, Jewel, we're going to find out who did this. Gertrude? Sorry to bother you. I know you've had a rough morning, but I need to talk to you. Yes, please come in. So, Gertrude, I know you're upset on what happened, and I know you've talked to the sheriff and gave him your statement, but I need you to tell me again what happened. <sighs> Jules came to my house and she was very angry. Something had happened at the Opera House and so he, she came in and we, we had drinks, we started talking and she started feeling better and that's when she gave me this. She gave you that jewelry? Jules doesn't have any running water and she doesn't know how to cook for herself so I invite her over every morning and we have breakfast together and she was very thankful and so out of gratitude she gave me this necklace. Is there anything unusual or out of the ordinary that you had noticed last night? No, just, I, y y you know what we do. She, she has men come over day, night, and just a couple of guys came over and 
Nothing unusual. Okay, Gertrude. If there's anything else that you forgot to tell me, you make sure you get a hold of me and let me know. Okay. Okay. The most cruel, outrageous, and revolting murder ever committed in the city was that of Julia Boulay on Sunday morning. How awful. She was such a nice woman. And one of her own. That's the scary part. What's happened? Morning, Liz. Come on, Mary, keep reading. A woman who lives next door came to call her to breakfast and discovered her to be murdered. She was found lying on her left side with a pillow over her head and face. The bed clothes beneath her head being saturated with blood. Her throat was lacerated with the marks of fingernails. Oh my God. And the blood suffused and distorted countenance together with the writhing position of her body showed conclusive evidence of strangulation. There were two small wounds on her forehead and the back of her left hand was somewhat lacerated in her struggle to free herself from the grasp of the fiend who had her in his power. The murderer took a set of furs worth $400 two gold watches and chains, and several pieces of valuable jewelry, even taking earrings from her ears. That was some funeral. Did you know that 60 men from company number one were in the procession? Says they took up a collection and got her a silver-handled casket, 16 carriages of mourners. Yep, I was there. You were at the funeral procession? Don't look so shocked. I can't help it. I thought you didn't want to talk about the murder or jewels. Seems like the whole town came out to pay their last respects. They buried her away from proper citizens. The damn shame. The folks of Virginia City were no strangers to murder, but the murder of Julia Buley shocked the whole town. She was loved by many, but she also had her detractors. The good folks of Virginia City didn't want her buried in the consecrated ground of the churchyard, and her body now rests a half a mile east of town in a lonely grave. Next time, the prosecution and trial of John Million. See you then.